Permettez-moi de vous présenter Lisa Rou, who is somewhere in the back, right? And I'm not able to pronounce your last name, Timothée Veyaskaz. It's fine, it's fine. All right. Uh, all the way from the Pyrenees, Gasconia, right? <laughs> all the way here in Prague with the, uh, with the, uh, with the talk on frugal science. The floor is yours. Um, I would start to remind uh, you that this work is, the, is due to Lisa Roux, and I'm only uh, the, the speaker because for some reason she could not uh, speak with you today. Uh, I know it's uh, unusual and maybe a little bit unfortunate, but I will try my best to present her work. Uh, to begin with, I would uh, like to um, describe briefly the current situation of our dominant practices regarding technology. It is often said that since World War II, we have entered the techno-scientific era. But what is techno-science? I'm referring to the work of uh, historian Dominique Pestre, who have directed a collective book about the history of science and techniques. He explains that the advent of techno-science is the last part of the evolution of modern science. Modern science can be described by four uh, criteria, which are all interconnected, as you will see. The control experiment became central to the production of knowledge instead of observation of uh, the natural environment. Uh, knowledge is produced using machines in a labor laboratory, uh, which induces co-fabrication of science and technique. Science became directly produced in a utilitarian perspective. Uh, the scientific reasoning does not aim uh, to understand the world, nature, and phenomena, but to mathematize the environment in order to master it. And fourth, uh, since science must be useful, it must be used to produce something, some new techniques. It can thus must be exploited to gain power. Political leaders began to provide fundings uh, to, the, to boost the scientific development, which value depends on its potential to uh, offer economic or military benefits. Technoscience is a certain form of modern science. Uh, the scientific production is now di directly devoted to industrial production. That is, it is organized with the aim or, uh, to produce technical uh, innovation uh, that could be taken up industrially. It seems to me uh, that we can see here why technoscience uh, seems to uh, frequently conflict with environmental ethics. In uh, environmental ethics, um, a theoretician tried to develop an ethics able to get away from the uh, anthropocentric gaze to think, to think our responsibility towards non-human beings, such as living individuals, spe species, or ecosystems. Yet, technosciences, which development is centered on an increased mastery of nature and focused on the industrial production, seems deeply anthropocentric, uh, nation-centered, and productivist in the frame of international competition and liberal capitalism. Thus, in this context, science does not aim, or in a very little minority, for understanding non-human beings in order to respect their rhythms and spaces, but to seek how to use them to foster industrial production, thus how to conquer them. So if we want uh, to take environmental ethics into account and rethink our limits, because this is, this is the main problem here, there, I mean, putting limits to our extension. Um, to respect and preserve the rhythm as in space, I think we first have to rethink our relationship to science and technology to move from the era of technoscience to the era of frugal science. I say frugal science here because at this point, um, the concept of frugality seems fruit fruitful to me. I would like to define it um, precisely because it is often used, but not always in the same meaning according to different authors. To properly understand what we are talking about, I would first like to define a concept that hopefully everyone here is familiar with, but unfortunately is often, I believe, distorted. 
which is sufficiency. A sufficiency is most commonly used today to refer to practices of resource restriction and is part of a desire to challenge consumer society. According to Thomas Prinsen, the pursuit of sufficiency breaks away from the productivist logic that seeks to maximize production in order to focus on what is enough. The goal is to establish the foundations of a new economy that is rational and moral. What was previously considered a personal ethic of mastering one's desire now carries a higher ethical dim dimension and can take on a collective scale. In the APCC's uh, sixth assessment report, sufficiency is defined as a set of daily measures and practices uh, that avoid demand for energy, materials, land and water, while de delivering human well-being for all within planetary boundaries. In summary, while um, efficiency mainly concerns equipment and studies the technical means and innovations that could be implemented to optimize the resource consum consumed in order to provide a similar or higher level of service or final consumption, sufficiency refers to behaviors and lifestyle choices aimed at reducing consumption. When it comes to sufficiency, it appears that two paths are possible. Uh, it can be voluntary and thus bring happiness, but it can also be forced. Uh, according to the IPCCs, these two levers, uh, efficiency and sufficiency, are complementary and necessary because uh, while it is essential to improve the efficiency of techniques and devices used to reduce the carbon footprint of human activities, it is insufficient. Not only does it fail uh, to sufficiently reduce resource and energy expenses in line with past international recommendations and agreements, but it could also have inverse effects. The rebound effects often undermine the proposed solution to reduce ecological, social or economical impacts. Now, what is frugality? At first glance, this word seems almost synonymous uh, with uh, sufficiency. However, it is used in distinct senses. I will briefly present the first one, which is uh, part of the growth logic. Um, for example, the company uh, Renault is often cited as a pioneer in frugal innovation due to the development of its Dacia models. It is clear that this cannot be considered sufficiency in the context of mobility, since it would involve doing away with individual cars. On the contrary, the development of the Dacia models aimed to expand Renault offering and it enabled them to reach new markets. These models, designed with local resources and uh, local, uh, local labor, uh, are much cheaper and can be offered at 5,000 euros. The representation of frugality by these companies seemed to align with the second principle of frugal innovation as described by Radu and Prabhu, which is doing more with less. Their analysis is based on the Indian concept of Jugad. They define, define it as an innovative, improvised solution born out of ingenuity and intelligence. It aims at establishing a faster, more efficient, and less costly innovation system. It involves tinkering, uh, recycling, and creatively and originally using products designed by wealthy countries. In such countries, Jugad would consist in reducing complexity at all levels of the company, thus enabling it to produce less uniform, more functional, resource efficient, and cheaper goods. The aim should be simplicity, flexible thinking, and action in order to offer the poorest classes not degraded versions of products targeted at the upper classes, but to consider them as customers uh, whose needs should be met on an equal uh, basis. It is therefore about finding new solutions adapted to the specific constraints posed by this market. The advantage, of course, is that it promotes a form of social justice as it aims to adapt to the constraints of the most disadvantaged population to meet their needs. However, this approach is always driven uh, by a desire for growth, with companies trying to increase their profits. 
um, interviews conducted by Weyhoch and Erstadt show that sustainability uh, can be an effect of frugal innovation, but it is not necessarily nor the case or the objective. Thus, frugal innovations such as the portable ultrasound device VSCAN or the Tata ACE mini truck aim to satisfy demands at reduced price, prices in the Chinese and Indian markets, respectively, uh, and were not driven by ecological uh, considerations. However, we can still uh, consider the three, three criteria defined by Weyhoch and Erstadt to define frugal innovation. First, uh, this approach must enable a substantial cost reduction. It should focus on core functionalities and it should offer an optimized level of per performance. They, um, uh, Raju and Prabhu also described the mythical uh, fridge. Um, th this is interesting because it could be part of the other version of frugality that I will explain uh, in a few moments. Uh, it is a clay refri refrigerator that operates through water evaporation and is designed for region in India without access to electricity. Uh, priced 60% lower than the average uh, electric uh, appliances. Now, let's move to the second approach of frugality that interests us a little bit more here. Um, the CNRS, the National Center for Scientific Research in France, also focuses on frugal innovation, which consists of an approach centered around simple, low-cost, ingenious solutions, coupled with the sober strategy, meaning an approach based on more moderate consumer behaviors. Um, in this regard, the CNRS cites the implementation of low-tech approaches, the use of biosourced, biodegradable or reusable sensors, the development of devices, methods and algorithms that are less energy and resource intensive, more sustainable and recyclable. Several projects have been recognized as frugal innovation and received support from the CNRS, such as El Dorado, a project uh, developing low-tech electrochemical sensors from organic waste to, monitoring, uh, to monitor um, water pollution in the Amazon. Thus, um, frugality conceived within an ecological approach refers to an innovation that satisfies local needs with, uh, while achieving substantial cost savings in terms of design, production and even usage through the implementation of simple and ingenious techniques and obviously resource efficient with the aim of economizing material and energy. The idea here is not to consider sufficiency as an individual ascetic attitude that requires uh, personal discipline, effort and sacrifice. Instead, it is about joyfully moving towards simpler way of life not seen as regression, but as new development. This involves uh, thinking and creating alternative modes of organization, inventing new techniques or investing in neglected techniques uh, to intelligently reduce the energy footprint of different communities without experiencing it as deprivation. Uh, technology is thus used in the service of of a sufficiency-oriented societal project to make it fulfilling. Um, Serge Latouche explained that while the rehabilitation of sufficiency as an individual self-limitation approach may resonate with the degrowth movement, it retains an ambiguity as it remains confined to a quantitative calculation and therefore remains within the framework of economic rationality. However, he theorizes that frugality as an, uh, a truly emancipatory um, degrowth approach, uh, sorry, okay, so um, as a truly emancipatory uh, degrowth approach, it involves not only uh, reducing quantity, but improving quality. If frugal abundance seems paradoxical, it is precisely because um, 
it breaks away from the contemporary model that is so challenging to overcome. It describes a radical, uh, different way of being and forming a society, which requires a complete reform of the system and for that, innovation. Frugal innovation in this sense uh, entails the total reconstruction of an autonomous and degrowth-oriented society and revolves around eight interdependent axes. The eight R's, um, re-evaluate, reconceptualize, restructure, relocalize, redistribute, reduce, reuse, and recycle. This degrowth perspective should be based on the principles of giving and conviviality, reciprocity, knowledge sharing, love, etc. In this regard, it is understood that the ethical application and dissemination of care represent a frugal innovation. Research and development should be re redirected towards this new aspiration. This perspective aligned with the etymological meaning frugality, which consists of being content with little because the community has reorganized itself to make it enjoyable and joyful. The approach of uh, Alain Bornarel, Dominique gauzin muller and Philippe Madec in the field of architecture, presenting frugality as an alternative to technocratic productivist energy and resource wasting visions of all kinds, seems to fit into this dynamic. They propose an harmonious and creative frugality as opposed to the imposed sufficiency of reducing resource consumption for the entire population by encouraging individual, uh, individual behavior changes. Uh, following Yamina Saheb's statement that sufficiency as advocated by French energy experts would trigger an unprecedented, an unprecedented uh, social crisis if implemented by public authorities, the three authors advocate for a happy frugality, anchored in a desire for equitable development, aiming to collectively rethink the organization of production and consumption, recycling, mobility, and habitation, to promote local developments by combining uh, usage, usage uh, efficiency, uh, sorry, usage sufficiency and technical efficiency. While sufficiency as defined by scientific bodies like the IPCC is not limited to an individual approach, it can be reduced to such in certain discourses. Therefore, it is to break away from, from the, these representations that frugal science can serve this social, uh, so, so, social project. It designates a scientific approach to the territory and strategic and clever technical choices, combining a holistic view with attention to detail that are made to accompany consumption reduction. Frugal science would thus be oriented in both its methodology and its outputs by a new ethics calling for, calling for um, prioritizing solidarity over competition, developing a cooperative and social economy, emphasizing shared and reasonable usage and mutualization over possession, privatization and waste. Its aim would be to promote sustainable um, human well-being concerning all humans in a pursuit of equality and justice. Regarding builders, this means acting on four aspects simultaneously. Uh, frugality in energy uh, by uh, promoting natural ventilation, passive cooling and thermal inertia in materials by using uh, biosourced insulation. Um, in technicality, by using uh, easily repairable or reusable devices and taking into account the territory's context uh, with close dialogue with resi residents, uh, studying the territory specificities, uh, culture, soil, water. This would be a collective and inclusive approach to sufficiency focused on equity. Um, 
Frugality could require rehabilitating the concept of bioregion, employing biomorphism or biomimicry, promoting circularity and breaking away from the excessive quantification logic of the market in favor of a sufficiency approach. For some, frugality was part of a green growth approach, um, or sometimes simply a search for new markets. For others, it is instead an attempt to support the sufficiency movement with a desire to return to the essentials without giving up on development. But by rethinking its objectives in light of the ecological and economic situation, social justice issues, uh, etc., sufficiency would primarily involve individual behavior of self limitation in consumption, while frugality would denote a creative and innovative approach seeking to reduce costs, economical, ecological, or both of them, while providing a robust product that meets no local needs. Thus, frugality is more aligned with a, um, an innovati innovative mindset. It appears now that, depending on one's interpretation of frugality, it may be seen as a collective facilitation approach characterized by solidarity, inclusion, and equity, and thus would be necessary to facilitate sufficiency, making it happy and just. And that's the end of the presentation. If you have some question, I will try my best to answer it, but since I'm not the authors, uh, that may be not so easy. All right, let's see. Uh, thank you, Zim. It was uh, really interesting. Um, my question just relates to the points in your presentation where you mentioned care ethics, and uh, it was quite quick. Uh, so <laughs> I would love to hear a little bit more. Uh, so how you see the connection between the idea of, of frugality and uh, the proposals uh, uh, in terms of care ethics, basically, where yeah, I'm uh, just to add, I'm aware of uh, the application of care ethics uh, in animal ethics, so that there is this framework of uh, kind of thinking about uh, uh, the relational subjectivity in, and uh, or having the, the relational concept of the self in animal ethics and including all the principles of care ethics there. Uh, but I like very much the idea of uh, care ethics being somehow fruitful for uh, the idea of frugality. So if you could expand on that um, for me, for us. I was so expecting that question. That, that was the first question I was expecting. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, the idea, uh, I will try to explain how I think uh, care ethics is a frugal innovation, if it suits you. Um, the idea is that frugal innovation is to make, so is to make the, the, the consumption reduction uh, more happy and more joyful, more equitable. And since I believe that we humans are um, uh, mainly based around social interaction. This is what we are looking for. This is the way we work together. This is the way we invent and, and evolve. Um, I think social interactions are the main um, reason we live and we enjoy uh, living. So um, to facilitate the consumption reduction, I think frugal uh, innovation has to base itself uh, a lot on social interactions. And in this regard, I think that the care ethics, um, which is centered around uh, social interactions and taking care of the, the people around you, so the, the, at the local scale, uh, not only at the local scale, but also at a local scale, I think it fits very well into the frugal uh, innovation and the frugal uh, society. Regarding the question of uh, non-human beings, uh, we, I think we simply, well, um, how, how can I say that? Uh, frugal ob uh, innovation obviously is not about uh, privileging, uh, uh, um, uh, putting humanity first and, and non-human uh, seconds. Uh, when I say 
um, it should promote um, uh, a, good, a good life for all uh, beings on the planet, I, of course, do not consider it only human. So it's just that the presentation is focused on this, this, uh, these issues. Uh, thanks. So techno-optimists among us um, are of an opinion that some of the major challenges facing the Earth uh, might be solved by some major technological advances, mm -hmm. carbon capture, nuclear fusion, uh, fusion energy, and so on. Yeah. None of these major projects are really frugal in, the, in your sense of the word. No do, you, do, do you see a major tension there? or? How, yeah, how to... you're right. They are not part of the frugal uh, innovation systems. Although, uh, let it be clear that I do not uh, advocate for a fully uh, frugal uh, science system. Okay, the, there's, the, the idea is that today technoscience is mainly uh, going toward a more sophisticated and complex uh, production of science and, product and industrial products. And the idea is um, to find a different way, uh, not... Uh, exclusive to uh, uh, um, a, a complex and sophisticated, uh, sophisticated science, but a complementary uh, way to uh, um, facilitate um, sub uh, sufficiency. In this regard, I, 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 I understand uh, the, and I know um, the uh, perspective that you are talking about, but I don't think they will... Um, they will manage to um, to support the the sufficiency uh, initiative, and it may uh, even uh, and they are really prompt to the rebound effect, where more uh, easily available energy may lead to more consumption, and so a problem that looks like it has been solved may be uh, not solved. Yes. Hi. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I, I really loved it. And it, it sounds for me like a great world if it would be like this. Um, in my free time, I'm, I'm involved with some low tech uh, cooperative um, it, um, yeah, collectives where we try to do things like this. And my the, the main challenge we encounter there, or at least I encounter, is that uh, people don't re they, they often need to learn how other technologies, for instance, works. And it's really convenient if you have everything set up and it's super fancy and it works. So I, I'm, I'm having a bit of a question on the practical side. Do you have any idea how to get people actually involved that they start to act and not only listen? Uh, in the frugal uh, yeah. well, social societal project. What, what kind of skills would you ask of people and how would you ensure that they free up the time, for instance, to get the, the right skills? Um, again, I believe that um, social interaction is a great uh, motor for uh, bringing people together, well, obviously, uh, but making them uh, interact and develop a new way of, uh, of, of building things or, or crafting things. So I guess the first step is to uh, maybe sometimes forced uh, force people to be together uh, on a local scale uh, to generate this kind of uh, initiative. Uh, the idea is that if we need, because I think we need to uh, implement sufficiency, uh, there's a way where we can use this implementation uh, not only to restrict energy consumption, but also to bring uh, people together in uh, collective uh, infrastructures and uh, by the use of uh, this uh, forced meeting, uh, which can also uh, be used for uh, exercising democracy, we can bring people together and, uh, and, and um, create uh, some, uh, some initiative. Regarding skills, um, the necessary skill to, to uh, put this in place, uh, I, I don't have a specific answer to give you. Um, I suppose this is, this is some, something that, uh, that needs to be uh, 
I don't think I'm going to find a translation for this French word, but uh, um, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I sorry. I, That's a, the, this the, this the is the limit of yeah. uh, the first part of the answer was already really okay. helpful. So thank you. It's really okay. Well, fair. I mean, in a way, I wanted to ask about low tech as well. So that so thank you for uh, answering this. So very quickly, I was also wondering if you could. Um, unpack a little more the relationship between frugality and degrowth mm -hmm. and uh, how yeah how these two relate to one another. you mentioned degrowth so yeah. I'm just wondering how interrelated they are as um, the idea of frugality is to um, meet uh, people's needs uh, with uh, in a different way uh, than before uh, and to ease uh, the, 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 the implementation of sufficiency. And in this way, it's, it's a way to degrowth. But there's also the question of um, frugal science and how it can uh, bring some uh, degrowth. Uh, the idea I presented uh, at uh, the beginning of technoscience being co constructed with industrial uh, production uh, is that uh, industry are on a perpetual race against uh, each other. The company tries to find new um, new products with new features that usually are not necessary, but anyway, they try to bring some new, new features. Uh, so customers uh, buy new products they invented and not the, the, the one of the, the competition. And so the idea of going into frugal science is a way, uh, because industry and science are co-constructed, co if uh, science uh, goes into a more frugal uh, science, it will mechanically, uh, I believe, um, slow um, uh, the possibilities of industry going into, uh, into this race of always going on to more uh, detailed and sophisticated features. So the idea is that if you have products that are not uh, racing the, 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 the race of uh, complexity and uh, sophistication, um, customers will also buy uh, less often such products. And uh, mechanically, you will, um, I think, reduce consumption. Because again, the whole point is about core features. Well, not the whole point, but part of the point is about core features. And if you have something that uh, deliver on this core feature and there's nothing more to add because you are, uh, this is a frugal innovation, then you don't need to buy a new product unless the last one is broken. There are uh, some interview with a, a French industrial uh, rep uh, representative uh, explaining uh, how um, industry produce um, have to design, produce, and sell a product within a two years frame because they need to race to 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 go on that race with other competitors. And and the rea there's a realization that. Uh, the customer will not replace its old product because it is broken, but because there's new features in the new products. 